What's up guys? My name is Marcus Huskins and thank you for joining me. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using the Atom in conjunction with the fader port to optimize your workflow. Let's get started. So I've got a basic track pulled up here. Let's have a quick listen to it from the start. We'll start off with, we have an instance of Mai Tai. Then I've got another bass sound. We'll bring in our piano. We've got an ambient loop. And I've got some hi-hats here. I'm not really sure if I'm going to end up using those, but they're in there as a scratch track. So for now, let's just mute them and we'll keep them out. I've got an instance of impact pulled up and I want to be using the Atom to trigger these sounds. So one thing to point out when using the fader port in conjunction with the Atom is although we have some similarities in terms of our basic transport functions, like they both have stop and we have the ability to, for example, activate click, we can record, uh, we can play. There's some functions on the Atom that actually aren't available on the fader port. And one key one when doing this type of workflow would be the ability to activate or deactivate your pre-count. So if I use the click button, normally that's activating the click, but the shift or the secondary function of this is pre-count. So that's something that I definitely want to do. Let's have a quick rehearsal of what I want to program here. Just a very basic drum pattern. Let's bring up Impact XT and I'm going to go ahead and play. So just something simple like that. And since we have our pre-count that's been enabled, we can just go ahead and push the record button. And let's lay down a basic kick, snare, and clap pattern. Okay, awesome. So one thing that I like to leave activated when I'm programming drums is this input quantize. So if I make any timing errors, then that's taken care of and I don't have to worry about it playing back out of sync. So we've got that set up. And one other thing I want to add is this hi-hat. So with this pad being the last one that's been touched, let's go into note repeat mode and I want to activate full level and I want to program something basic. So something like that. Again, we're going to make sure we're at the beginning. We have our pre-count enabled. We can double check by clicking shift click. And let's go ahead and record that. And we'll bring up the GUI as well. Okay, awesome. So now that that's done, we can close this and let's have a listen to what we're working with. So at this point, this is probably where I would hop over to the fader port. And if I wanted to do any mixing, so for example, I can solo out my drums. Okay, maybe we'll listen to some of these individual elements. So at this point, I would be hopping over to the fader port. And if I had any sends or any plugins or anything like that, I could pretty simply just select one of these channels over here and open up the edit plugins dialog. And I can toggle now between doing my basic mixing between the Pro EQ or for example, the mix tool, anything that I need to adjust. But this is a really great way to be able to use the both of these in conjunction with each other. And again, the big difference here is that some of these features that are available on the Atom they're not available on the fader port. And conversely, if I had, for example, markers or something like that instantiated, let's go back into track mode. And then if I wanted to bring in some markers, I could drop some markers in place. So if I wanted to have some markers here and I wanted to be using these markers during production, I could be in marker mode on the fader port and I could be navigating to the different sections that I need to go. And then of course, either one of these transport would activate from that point. So that's how I like to use the Atom in conjunction with the fader port for my personal workflow. Before we go though, let's take a look at one more example where we'll dive into some different aspects of the fader port that can come in really handy as well. So I've got a Studio One song loaded, and in this case, we're using a multi-out Impact XT preset. So let's use the show hide on the Atom. Now, if we take a look at Impact XT, we can see that in the bottom right-hand corner, 
some of these pads are mapped out to a different output. So the great thing about using the fader port with the Atom is that we have individual control over all these channels. So if we were to highlight all of these channels over here, I could, for example, offset the volume of all of these channels together. Now, in addition to that, we can also adjust the parameters of the plugins. So if I wanted to make a selection and choose the edit plugins menu, I could call up the fat channel that's sitting on my kick track and I could start making adjustments to the attack and ratio of this compressor, for example. Now, in addition to that, we also have access to the sends. So if I click the sends parameter, now I have the ability to adjust my reverb sends for all of these selected channels. And I can do this very easily with all of these faders being active. So using the fader port 16 or the fader port 8 for that matter, alongside with an Atom really gives you the ability to get your hands off the mouse altogether and take control of your levels, your plugins, your effect sends pretty seamlessly without having to revert to grabbing the mouse. So I hope you found this video useful. That's my personal workflow of how I like to use these two controller devices together. If you need more information, head over to personas.com. You can find information on the Atom as well as the fader port. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.